Hey, Worship Teams, welcome back to the Worship Team Hangout. Man, it's so great to have you. It's been a long time. We wanted to say, uh, by the way, you know, kind of late Merry Christmas, Happy New Year uh, to you. We kind of took a long vacay from that situation back in December, you know, the time where everyone was doing all these Christmas presentations and wacky, crazy stuff with their services. So glad that season's over. And man, it is a new year. We are excited. We have a great show for you today. And we are just pumped. We're stoked. We have uh, with us today a special guest that we're going to introduce in just a second. I uh, want to say hello to our regular host, which is Tony Grove. How you doing today, Tony? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Swift, how you doing, Mo? I think he's froze. I don't know what his problem is. Uh, actually, he looks better that way. <laughs> Can you move a little bit to the left? Because I think the lighting would be better. Oh, that's perfect. Perfect. Swift, how you doing, Bubba? Awesome, man. I'm doing well. Uh, Happy New Year. Good. Happy New Year to you. And Tony, is he still, is he still there? Has he moved? Has he moved he, no, seriously, I think he's froze. I think he's froze. I think he, he, he actually looks better. That's Let a, it go! That's Let a, it go! That's a good look for him. He looks so peaceful. It's a good look. It is. He's kind of like half asleep. Kind of like, kind of like James on Jimmy Fallon, you know, where you're asking him to do his thank you notes and just kind of sit yeah. very quietly, spaced out. But you can't make him laugh. So anyway, I'm just going to go ahead. But uh, hey, great. let's go ahead and get to it. We are talking today about our uh, topic. And we're going to be sharing about, uh, more uniquely, the idea of uh, what it means to help and unify, um, you know, as far as worship, uh, what God's called us to do, life beyond the stage. That's our topic for today. And we have some really great uh, items that we want to discuss, some things that we shared. On our last episode, we had uh, both Corey Voss and also... Um, uh, we had uh, another one of his good friends. Uh, just a, a really great time. And coming up, guys, uh, we wanted to say uh, a special thanks for you that have been joining us here on uh, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You've been following us. Thank you so much for that. We really, really dig having you. Uh, Stephanie Kelly and Tim Timmons are out today. We will have them back hopefully the next episode. But check it out. Coming up, we have Derek Johnson also from Jesus Culture that's going to be joining us along with Rob Corona with Songsmith, and then Lee McDermott from New Spring. Uh, Swift has got some connection with that. And uh, we want to big, have a big shout-out. Thank you to New York. We did a great worship team training workshop out there. want to thank you, Pastor David, and also Karen over at Hope Church. It was a fantastic time. We love you guys. It's been awesome. Next up, Rhode Island, New Jersey, Indiana, Atlanta. We're coming to you. So, folks, if you want worship team training to come to your church, be sure to go to worshipteentraining.com slash register. And if you have any comments or questions from today's show, be sure to hashtag us at hashtag worshipteamhangout or find us at Twitter uh, at worshiptt. Without further, any further ado, let's go ahead and introduce our special guest today. Marked with a passion for Jesus, our special guest is a worshiper and a songwriter that carries a unique sound born in and for the local church. His songs are characterized by theological depth, that draws inspiration from the love and power of God, carrying the signature of revival. For over 10 years, if you can believe that, he has overseen the music and creative culture of the Harbor Church in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. 2004, he married his college sweetheart, Janet, or Jeanette, and they have uh, four children. They just had a brand new baby girl, Isabel Ray, including uh, their, their other awesome kids, Owen, Elliot, Elliot and Emma, and from his family to his music, he desires to see the generation impacted in a life-changing way by God's presence. Everybody, please welcome Justin Jarvis. Justin, how are you today? I'm doing great. How are you, Brandon? Doing great, man. Thanks so much for joining us today. It's awesome to have you. It's awesome to be here. It's going to be a good time. Yes, yes. Well, uh, and we now we got uh, Tony. Tony, how are you doing today? I'm good. I would like to know why my internet keeps dropping. Oh, so that wasn't a joke. You were actually, you weren't playing us? I was not playing you. It actually, you actually had a really good look. You were still, and it kind of, it's like this. Good. Like a baby, like a, like a precious angel sleeping. Um, I wouldn't characterize it that far, but it was nice <laughs> to have you, 
you know, anyway, so, but Justin, hey, congratulations to you, speaking of baby, with Isabel Ray, that's awesome, man. Thank you, man. Number four. How does number four? I love four that name. <clears throat> it's intense, but it's wow, good. number four. That, you know, the comedian Jim Gaffigan said, you want to know what it's like having four children? Imagine you're drowning and somebody throws you a baby. <laughs> <laughs> My wife and I actually watched that last night. We got a good laugh out of it, and then we cried a little. Yeah. That's so good. <laughs> That's so good. Well, hey, let's jump into today's topic. Uh, we were talking about life beyond the stage, and many of you worship leaders and worship team members, you may be the one volunteering a lot at your church. You may be the one leading worship. You may be the one putting together uh, projection or audio or whatever in your church. And we can get so caught up in what we do when God has called us, of course, to be caught up in Him in the moment of worship. And it's amazing to see how God uses us, our ministries, and, and to see life change in the church. But what happens to you when you leave the stage? It's more than just a week on a Sunday, but it's a moment-by-moment -moment worship to God. So let me just ask this question. Uh, number one, how is worship more than just a one-hour event? Swift. I wasn't expecting that, but thank you. Thank <laughs> uh, you, baby. Um, I think for anything, um, how worship – Wait a minute. So now we're talking about how is worship more than just one hour an event? Well, Very worship good. is a lifestyle. Uh, first of all, um, we're we're not we're all called to worship, and uh, it's not just a thing of like it's a one hour event. It's a one hour event for us as a community, as a church. Um, you know, some churches do two hours. I went to a church. Um, uh, a, a Southern Baptist church, man, I, I went there on uh, Sunday and I left Tuesday. It was an awesome <laughs> service. Uh, so some hour. services are, are longer than one hour events. Uh, nothing against that. Dang it, it came out wrong. Uh, but back to your question. Um, so I believe we're all called to worship more than just one hour. We're all called to uh, be a part of a God's plan. Uh, so, you know, for me, it's a lifestyle and not just a one-hour event. And that's how I would sum it up. Uh, Tony, can you add to that? Very good. Thank you, Swift. Uh, are you throwing it to me? Yeah, we are now because Swift well, just kind of really did a weird handoff. I don't know what was that, but go ahead, Tony. <laughs> go ahead, man. You're on. Go ahead. Well, I was you know, you know, my uh, I, my self-appointed role is to challenge people, and I would tell you that if if your uh, if your worship is limited to the one hour that you're on stage leading worship, then you're probably not ready to be a worship leader. So, really, I mean, uh, the the time that we get up in front of a crowd and play music for them to respond to really just needs to be a part of what we do. Like like Swift said, as a lifestyle of worship, and um, it just needs to be a continuation. That you know that the breakfast you have with your family is just as much an, a, a time of worship for you as the time that you're in front of people pretending everything's great, you know, yeah. and that you're awesome. And uh, the time you walk off the stage, I mean, all of that stuff. Um, there's just a big difference between categorizing worship as something you set a, an appointment to do versus a way that you live throughout your daily life. And that's um, uh, that's something that all of us as Christians kind of need to learn and continuously work on. It's not something that we ever really totally nail. True. Very good. Thanks. Uh, Justin, what's your thought on that? How is worship more than just a one-hour event? I, I mean, I think what Tony and Swift – are saying is right on. I think it's a lifestyle. I think it's it's a heart posture that we take um, when it comes to relationship with God. You know, it's mm -hmm. rooted in relationship with God. And so, <clears throat> if God's all around us, if He's in us, if He's through us each and every day, every moment of the day, then 
in our lifestyle and in the choices that we make and the things that we say and the in the things that we do each moment we have we have an opportunity to engage and encounter the presence of God in our own in our own personal experience in our own personal journey and let him into who we are and what we're doing every day um, not just as you know a, a job description as a worship leader or a ministry calling but just as regular everyday people you know God's presence in us it wants to come out and and sometimes the sometimes the place of worship the place of engaging his presence is literally just a fine line between turning your thought turning your heart turning your affection toward God or not in any given moment you know hmm. and so i think i think that's us us practicing his presence, so to speak, us um, engaging relationship with him more and more and more, being mindful of him. I think, I think that's the worship that we're after, and then that spills over into our one-hour, two-hour corporate experiences, you know, where we celebrate the engagement that we have every moment of every day, week in and week out, and... Um, you know, I think the church is waking up to that. I think we're in an amazing time where, where people are hungry for more. You know, they're hungry for more than just a service. They're hungry for more than just a ministry expression. They want a relationship that changes the way they think and the things they say and the choices they make. And yeah, I think that's the worship we're after. You know, it's hmm. awesome. Um, <laughs> that's good, Tony. What what makes worship leading True and authentic. <clears throat> uh, I think that t ties into what we're what we've been saying that it um, it needs to be just a a part of your being and your heart posture. You know, I could I think it would be fair to say that there's probably not a moment in Jesus' life where we would look at him and think he is not worshiping God right now, and yet. There was a time when he was a, a carpenter, and so he was just building a table. Yeah. And uh, and yet, in that moment, I think it would be fair to assume that he was living a life of worship while he was doing this seemingly mundane task. Yeah. And that's something we all we all do. I mean, we all go about our day and um, pick up the dry cleaning and uh, do our administration work and whatever it is we do. And that really needs to not be any different than the time that we're up there leading music. And in fact, <clears throat> I think you have to be even more careful when you're up there leading the music because that's the time when we stand up there and say, yay, God, we're worshiping you now. That's the time that God's looking at us really closely. And, you know, you go to Amos 5 and, and he's saying, I hate all your show and pretense and right. the hypocrisy of your... I mean, God's saying, I hate the hypocrisy of your religious festivals and solemn assemblies. Mm -hmm. And he says, away with your music. I, I don't want to listen to the noise of your music. Right. I mean, that's... that's so oh. when, we, when we put ourselves onto the worship platform, we are setting us up for that critique right there. It's almost easier to avoid the worship platform and just do our dry cleaning and our administration work and just do that and, and try to keep talking to God. But we put ourselves up there in that place. That's It's not just the world that looks at us as hypocrites. God looks at us as hypocrites too. So it's a very, uh, it's a very careful thing we have to, to be about. We have to be about that business daily so that it is a continuation of, of what we're doing, that worship doesn't start at 9 a.m. Worship is yeah. just, it's just the time that people gather together, but worship is a continuous thread. Yeah, awesome. Good word. Thank you. That's that's great. Um, not talking. I didn't, yet, I didn't so. write it. No, it's okay. <laughs> Swift. No, never mind. Justin, uh, what's your what's your thought on that? I mean, Tony has some great things to say. Uh, Swift, he has some great things to say. And we talked about a worship as a lifestyle. Um, Justin, tell us how can we? You talked a second ago about that's what the church is after. You know, worship, real worship. 
and um, that's a good word because we're all seeing that kind of trend. How do we help our churches to become more active from being passive? I think a big part of that has to do with giving people per permission to be themselves and God, permission mm -hmm. to be good. free to who Christ made them to be. Um, you know, me, for instance, I'm, I'm 35, gr grew up in the church, um, and in, in, my, in my paradigm growing up in the church, in my church culture, it was like, if you want to do something great for God, you need to become a youth pastor or a associate pastor or go to seminary or get, you know, become a missionary or whatever. And I think we're in a different day in the church. I think we're in a day where people need permission from leadership. They need permission. They need to hear themselves from God, like that they're, that their being as a believer, as a part, as a piece of the body, you know, whether they're an eye or a foot or a hand or a whatever, like Paul talks about, you know, that, that, that they have value in that place, that they have value in the body, and that, and that, you know, the Holy Spirit is with them, he's in them, the resurrection power of Jesus lives inside of every believer. And I think people, um, you know, they need permission to be all that God's created them to be in that context, in their sphere of influence. You know, whether you're a businessman or an entrepreneur or a cashier or a construction worker or a musician or whatever you are, you know, whatever you do, that you have an identity in God that's rooted as I'm a son of God, I'm a daughter of God, and I carry resurrection life because of the grace of the gospel, hmm. I carry his resurrection life inside of me, and because of that, I have something to give to the people that I'm around every day, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so I, I, I think to activate worship in the church, what you're really talking about is an activation of people's identity and, and just the gospel, what Jesus has paid for, and what yeah. that means for them personally. Yeah. Um, which you think, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, I'm. I'm just. You know, one of your uh, your new album is called Atmospheres. Uh, a great, fabulous piece of work. Your first track was called Take Heart. Um, does that kind of line up a little bit with what you're talking about? Because that's what I'm hearing. I think so. I mean, I mean, that's. Uh... You know, that, that song, I wrote it just straight out of the scripture where, where Jesus is basically, he's promising us that, that in life we'll have trouble, you know. We, when we become believers, we don't get some kind of get out of trouble free card, you know. It just doesn't happen. Actually, what he says is, in, what I give you is in the face of trouble, mm -hmm. you're going to have hope. You have a hope that others won't have. You know, and uh, and and so I think in a way it, it connects to what we're talking about. We have a hope that others don't have, and have we given people as 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 those that have roles of leadership in the church? Are we giving people permission to activate that hope on a daily basis outside of the four walls of the church, yeah. in their work context, in their family context, where they live, all that stuff? I love that. Uh Thanks, Justin. I mean, because that's that's what we're talking about. Tony, you hit upon that too. Uh, you know, worship moving beyond the four walls. Uh, Swift, take us to the bridge. Uh, what's your final thought on that? Well, I, as he was talking, I was thinking about First uh, John four thirteen. He says, "This is how we know that we live in Him and He in us. He has given us His Spirit." And so, with us knowing that, that's tying into the hope. You know, Hebrews sixteen. I mean, Hebrews uh, six nineteen. The hope we have is an anchor of hope. Uh, so I might misquote that a little bit. Sorry, but um, that ties into what God is saying to. I mean, Christ came to save us, right? To like free us from sin, you know. And and He gave us that. He gave us that uh, the the new life that we have as Christians. So I like everything that you were saying, man, and. 
you know, to me, I think a lot of people don't understand that. And I mean, it, we we say it and we talk about it, and it's really kind of simple. I mean, you, once you open your heart and and you submit to that, you'll find that you know, yeah, there's going to be hard days. There's going to be times where everything is not great, but you you know that you have that hope, and and if you continue to plow through that, that things are going to be better, and you'll be you know you'll get through it with with God's plan and the love he has for us so to activate our community we have to like you said give them permission to know these things to, to understand that they have that same power and, and you know we got to be involved in the community a little bit more uh, uh, than just the four walls of church it, it has to go beyond that uh, we, we just got to live in that uh, as a church community and uh, I'm not saying that a lot of churches don't do that. A lot of churches are involved in that, but we have to do that. If right. somebody's not doing that and they're watching this podcast now, it can start with you. So, right. Tony, final thought? Um, no, I mean, you, one of the questions you had was um, about what happens when you leave the platform yeah. You know, the, the truth is when you leave the platform, you go right back into whatever pattern you were in before the platform. And that's, uh, you know, I mean, that and that, inc that includes every sin we do. I mean, when we walk off the worship stage, uh, we're just we're the same sinners we were before the worship stage. We're the same sinners we are on the worship stage. You that's know? right. Um, and so there's a, there's a, um, <clears throat> I think that I think part of what we have to do is just be honest with um, ourselves and where we are with that. I that I think that I think a a a congregation that is genuinely in touch with the Holy Spirit is going to know when you're up there faking it. And I think there's there's almost nothing. I think what God's talking about in Amos is those of us up there who are telling who are presenting a a picture of ourselves as having it all together yeah. and. Um, and that tends to be the, you know, being on that platform, it's show business. And when you are on stage in, in, a, uh, in a production of any kind, your instinct to kick in is to make yourself look good. It's just a natural human tendency we have is make yourself look good uh, because I'm on stage. I want everything to go right. I want people to like me, all these things. And so we present a picture of ourselves. I, I have to be honest and say there are times Sunday morning where I walk off the platform and I feel like, I didn't. I didn't engage one single time during that. But you know what? That's that's a fair reflection of what that week might have been for me. I might not have been engaged going up to that. I right. it may be a, a something that has. I have to kick start again so yeah. that next week that doesn't happen. And then right. there are those times where maybe I engage just for a short period of time. But to be up there and 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 be faking it the whole time, I think that's a that's a bigger crime for me. Hmm. Awesome. I don't know if that makes sense. I was kind of I was kind of talking in my head there a little bit. So no, that's good. That that whatever was in the head came out just fine. So was, trust me, that was good. Thank you though. Appreciate you, Bubba. Love that. Love that. Swift, thank you, man. Good word no there. Justin, thank you so much for being here with us today. It was awesome to have you. Uh, can we have you back in another episode? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> he It'll says awesome. no. No, I don't want. I want, I want to get out of here. <laughs> we want. Uh, hello. Am yeah, I? Still yeah. Oh, I'm not muted. It's awesome. No, we didn't mute you this time. I'm coming close. I thought, I thought we were about to do cheers. Cheers. Very good. That was my hospital uh, love. Anyway, so, uh, Justin, thanks again for being here. Pleasure to have you. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah, good. It's good crazy. You. Awesome. And, uh, yeah, of course, my wife, Tony. Justin. Awesome guy, man. Justin, real quick, who is your favorite? <laughs> Who is my favorite? Oh, that's... You don't have to tell, what you don't just have to got tell through saying, Tony? Remember what you just got through saying? Where's the coming? Hey, Where's I'm just being authentic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. How do you pick your uh, favorite Ninja Turtle? Or... <laughs> <laughs> they all have their, you know, <laughs> what they add, so I don't know. Well, well uh, uh, how do you pick your favorite Ninja Turtle? Everybody knows Leonardo, man. Come on. <laughs> right? 
Yeah. Well, everybody, uh, it was great to have Justin and his first and last time on today's show. So <laughs> we'll be seeing him sometime, you know. So just kidding. Oh. Great to have you, <laughs> guys. Thanks so much. Uh, we definitely are going to have Justin yeah. back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Justin yeah. Bork, and uh, this guy, I'm not yeah. sure about. Tony's a must-have. He will always be there. Uh, we'll miss Timmons and Stephanie. They'll come back hopefully on the on the next episode. Check it out on February the fourth. And February the 18th, on our next two episodes, we will have Derek Johnson, a good friend of Justin uh, from also Jesus Culture, and also Rob Corona from Songsmith, and then also maybe Lee McDermott from New Spring. So we're looking forward to having those guys. Uh, again, be sure to hit us up on Twitter, Worship, uh, that's at WorshipTT, and also Worship Team Training on Facebook, Instagram, Google. Thanks again for joining us, you guys. Uh, be sure to look out for Stephanie Kelly because when she comes back, we have a really cool music arrangement uh, training tracks lesson, and that's also something that I want to get this guy involved in as well because he's got some really good things to say about music. So anyway, guys, thanks so much again for joining us. We'll see you back at the next Worship Team Hangout. Have a fabulous day. Bye-bye.